I recently bought the GameTel Bluetooth GamePad from the UK. I bought this along with the iControl Pad, but I'll review that in another video. What this device essentially does is it connects to your smartphone via Bluetooth and gives you D-pad and buttons to control your game. Basically, it turns it into like a DS or a PSP. Um, touch screens are great for games like Angry Birds, but for some games, virtual controls on a touch screen, um, it's not that great. So this is where this comes in. What's interesting about the packaging is that the box and instructions make no mention whatsoever of Apple or iOS devices at all. Um, it does, you know, have the Android logo and whatnot, so it seems like it's marketed towards Android devices. But if you go to their website, GameTel.se, it actually has instructions for making it work well with Apple uh, iOS devices. The GameTel works in four modes, Android mode, iCade mode for iOS devices, um, gamepad and keyboard mode for Mac and PC. There's actually a couple hundred games in the App Store that support uh, iCade mode, so the game tower will work with them, no problem. To put them in the various modes, you basically put, hold down the start button and then press one of the buttons that corresponds to the mode that you want. And once you set the mode, it'll stay in that mode even when you turn it off. Not all games will work with this device, um, but any game that supports iCade will work with the game tower. The game tower is perfect for emulators. Using virtual controls to play games like Super Mario Brothers is really not that fun, so if your phone is jailbroken or rooted, you can have access to thousands of games that span back decades. Pretty much all emulators will support IK mode, which the GameTel will do. This really isn't the first uh, device of its kind. There's other devices that do something similar, like the eye control pad, uh, which I'll review in another video. I think the GameTel has a better clamping mechanism for attaching your phone. It folds away when you don't need it, and it's really easy to unfold and you slot your phone in there and like that there you go, it's pretty snug your phone's not going to fall off so this is iPhone 4 with a case on and it fits fine and here's an older iPhone 3G and it fits fine and when you take the phone out it kind of folds away out of the way so I like the design of the clasp more so than the eye control pad so like I mentioned, there's the eye control pad, and there's like, Ion also has the iCade mobile. So for those who are familiar with the iCade, it's like this arcade machine type of device where you plug in your, your iPad and it gives you joystick and buttons. So it works the same way. That's why a lot of these game pads have iCade mode, because they're essentially they're doing the same thing that the iCade does, but um, in a, on a smaller scale. A gamepad as opposed to a joystick. When I got this device it had firmware 1.0 installed. At the time of the video the latest firmware is 1.3 so I downloaded the configuration tool as well as the latest firmware and updated it. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you can also use the configuration tool to change the button mappings and set the modes. This device is actually pretty expensive. I think I paid about 50 pounds or something from the UK and it's about $80 um, after exchange rate and shipping so it's a little bit pricey but um, there's not that many companies that make these type of devices so that's why they're kind of expensive so you know as more and more companies start making these type of devices the price should go down so I'm hoping you know maybe it'll get down to like twenty dollars or something like that I, I think that would be a good price for a gamepad like this the battery life on this claims to be nine hours but I haven't had it long enough to figure out if it is nine hours uh, since I've charged it once, I haven't needed to charge it for like a week already, so uh, that's pretty good, I guess. So let's talk about the controls. Uh, the D-pad, it's okay. It's definitely better than using, you know, touch controls on a on a touch screen, but it's not the best. I wish they would have made like a you know Super Nintendo type of D-pad. The left and right triggers are a little bit uh, stiff, but they work fine. It, I rarely use these buttons anyways and the start and select well they're they're okay too the action buttons are good so I'm a little disappointed in the d-pad I wish it would have been better designed but it does work and uh, it's an improvement over your virtual controls on a touch screen for sure and it's still great for emulators I wish they made the um, it a little bit longer because I notice when I'm holding it there's not a lot to grip with so it's one of the reasons why, you know, like my PSP will have like these grips on it, right? So that I can, so it's easier to hold. So I kind of wish that they maybe made it a little bit longer so there's more 
more uh, controls so there's more of it to grab especially if, it, if you have big hands and um, other than that it's not a bad device overall I think it's okay it's not great it's definitely an improvement over you know the virtual controls on your touch screen and uh, for those who play a lot of like emulators or games that obviously require um, physical buttons and controls this is this is definitely a must-have but there's definitely um, improvements to be made on this device um, like I mentioned I really like the clasp or the clamping mechanism I prefer this over the eye control pad actually it's it's really nice and you know you could fold away easily and and it, you can use it as a regular gamepad for your iPad or or PC or Mac so to get the game tell to work with your phone you're gonna have to pair it up like you would with any Bluetooth device and you turn it on uh, you turn it on by holding the start button for a few seconds and the light should blink and now it's turned on and it's connected via Bluetooth to my iPhone so let's take a look at a few games here well, one of my favorite games is called Ice Rage and it's a very simple game where you try to score on the other team make it easier. It only has one button in the directional controls. So you can hit the player by pressing the E button and scoring and obviously there's the on-screen controls which I'm not a big fan of because one of the big problems with um, on-screen controls is that it blocks some of the screen so you can't see some of it so definitely having something like this is um, gives you a, a more of the screen to look at so that's Ice Rage so let's take a look at another game. This one's called um, Retro Racing. Very simple game. There's only like one button and uh, left and right. I think there's there might be a brake, but I never use it. And it's like uh, Micro Machines. You basically drive around picking up uh, power-ups and very simple game. The graphics are very um, old school. That's what I like about it. It's a very simple game. Again, it's 99 cents from the App Store. So that is Retro Racing. So let's take a look at another game. This one's called Super Crossfire HD. It's like Space Invaders or Galaga. Um, you'll notice I'm not really pushing any buttons because it fires for you automatically. So the only button you would press is to switch from the bottom or top. So to move the, the spaceship from the top to the bottom, you'd press a button. But other than that, it fires for you. So it's a nice, simple game. That's Super Crossfire HD. So now let's just take a look at emulators. One of my f uh, favorite emulators is the Nintendo emulator. Um, to make it work with the game tell, you gotta go to input and use iCade. We'll turn that on. And let's load up a game. Super Mario Brothers. And one player. Using the on-screen controls for this game is really hard to do. I don't really like using it, but with the gamepad, with the game tell, it's definitely it's as if you were playing with a real Nintendo system, obviously.
So this is um, IFBA running Street Fighter. And one of the things with um, playing emulator, um, em emulated games like Street Fighter, it's kind of hard to do the moves with the touch, touch screen. So I'll show you that it's actually much easier to do it with this game tile device. Fireball and uppercut. So definitely a lot easier to do it with buttons, of course. Let's take a look at um, Super Nintendo, another favorite console of mine. Again, you have to go into the options and turn on Use iCade. Um, let's take a look at F0. So this is a game where you know the trigger, the left and right trigger comes in handy because there's air brakes. Again, it works a lot better than if you were to use the touch screen. Anyways, you get the idea. Emulators work very well with this device. So there you have it. Um, I really like the device and it works great with um, the obviously the officially supported iCade games uh, but most importantly it works fantastic with emulators